um, here at the central office, the professional personnel, and do our required evaluation training um, via video. So Lily has so graciously agreed um, to do this for us, and um, we're going to get started. And we're going to be looking at policy 5310 um, with the West Virginia Board of Education and then our own Cabell County policy 1530. So why are we doing this? Why do we need this annual evaluation training? So one of the reasons that we do it is that we want to promote a professional growth in all of us um, that advances our students in their learning. Our second reason would be that we want to hold higher standards for ourselves with our learning. Another reason would be it allows um, other administrators here at the central office um, to make some sound decisions with um, what we're relating our goals and our strategic plan to. Another reason would be that we can um, provide data for our educational preparation programs um, where we might need areas of identifying different needs and guiding our other programs for improvement. And lastly, that we use this evaluation tool that all of us go through for a basis for our own professional development and our own growth. Bottom line is, we're here to improve our performance and our professional growth um, as part of the central office team and the work that we do here. So through this training, I am going to discuss the evaluation process for all central office staff in professional positions that include both administrators as well as our professional support staff. So those of you that may have not been in the training um, previously in previous years, those administrator positions include our assistant superintendents, our executive directors, our directors, managers, supervisors, and coordinators. For the professional support positions, those include our academic specialist, our IEP compliance specialist, social workers, school nurses, school psychologists, attendance specialists, accountants, and any other professional positions that we may have. A lot of those, the professional support positions, um, are housed upstairs on the second floor, so um, we include the school nurses with this, even though they receive uh, a separate training for school nurses. Theirs is a little bit more specialized. All right, so let's get into the policy here and um, review a few things before I show you the forms and um, talk about a couple of other things. So we have to have a minimum of one written evaluation per year. It has to be conducted by your immediate supervisor and we have to have mutually established goals set by November 1. And in policy, it's really important. It just doesn't say just establish these goals. It says they have to be mutually established. So it has to be between you and your supervisor. You should be having a little meeting and setting down and going over the goals that you want to have in place that you're working on for this year. So, and those goals are not meant to be cumbersome when you're filling out this form, which we'll refer to in a minute. It's only meant to be two or three goals that you can work on throughout the year um, to meet with your professional growth. And then you're going to sit down with your supervisor and you're gonna have a conference by November 1 to get those established. And that's what you're gonna be working toward till the end of the year. And then once um, you get those established, policy states that we need to meet with our supervisor at least once annually to review, to see how we're coming along with those goals. So what we've set up, we've just basically set an easy way to remember that is doing it at semester. And that way you can just kind of visit and have a discussion with your supervisor to see how you're doing with those. So the final evaluation conference will be held by June 30th with your supervisor, and that's a narrative description of what um, you have completed and you're working towards your goals for this past school year. Once you have met with your supervisor and signing off on the evaluation, I wanna be sure that everybody understands, and we've said this in the past, through policy, that signing off on the evaluation doesn't mean you agree with it, it just means that you and your supervisor, that you reviewed it. 
If you are disputing some things on the evaluation, the final evaluation, you can add the addendum and you have up to uh, five days after receiving that, five working days to do that. Also, it's important to note when we're working on these evaluations um, throughout the year when you're working with your, towards your goals, that you are maintaining a portfolio. Policy again states that we are to maintain a portfolio to demonstrate our progression of our goals. I know a lot of people will simply keep like, for lack of a better term, like a scrapbook of just keeping things in a binder, or some people take it to the next level and they keep it online. Um, they can do it uh, through, their, through their immediate supervisor that they review those through an electronic portfolio. And that's fine, just as long as you're maintaining a portfolio. If um, at any point during the year, if an employee here at the central office in the professional positions, if you know there are some issues or some things that are coming up and you're struggling and the supervisor um, feels the need there might be a need for an improvement plan, that is also in place through this process and uh, policy 5310 states that the plan shall designate how the central office person will meet the standards in doing that. And it, spells out for us that there are um, steps that we need to take with these improvement plans. Number one, we have to identify the deficiency or the deficiencies that the person is having trouble with. We have to have a specific corrective action plan to help remediate those. Uh, there has to be a time frame for monitoring that as well as a deadline. These improvement plans, they can't go past an 18-week timeline as per policy. And then with the improvement plan, we have to include resources that have to be described in the plan in helping to correct those deficiencies. And then once the employee has successfully corrected the deficiencies um, and continue to meet the standards, they have to continue to meet the standards um, because if they don't and they regress back, that can lead to grounds for termination. So the improvement plan, um, if, if it were to go that route, the assistance can be um, asked with an improvement team. You, you, you are afforded the opportunity to have a team. And that team can include, or the, I guess policy states that it must include, your immediate supervisor. It has to have one additional administrator in the related field that in which you are working a professional educator in the same related field that's been approved by the superintendent. And it's important to note that this team is only to serve as a resource, as basically a support for the person on the improvement plan. And that the authority um, to retain that evaluation goes directly to the supervisor. The team monitors the improvement plan and can also conduct observations and conferences with the um, employee that may be having the trouble that can provide training to the person in need of the improvement plan and they can also identify additional resources that may be of help. So now that we have a general overview of the central office staff evaluation procedures and how they uh, pertain to each of us in our roles, let's look at the evaluations for both administrators and for support, support professional personnel. So both will complete the mutually established goals form. And as you can see from the established goals form, this is again, like I stated earlier, it's not meant to be anything to go into a lot of paperwork with this. We really only need to be including two or three goals that we can work on. Two is absolutely fine, but make sure that you are doing this with your supervisor, that it's mutually, it's a conversation that you're having with your supervisor in order to determine which way you want to go with this with this year. Uh, the first column is where you're going to list your goals, your objectives for the year. The next column has the assessment criteria in which you're going to use to get to that point in reaching those goals. And then there's um, the reference to the narrative appraisal, and we'll go over the narrative appraisal here in just a second. But it also has a column that you will use that you can refer to the strategic plan. And then it's got our completion date and then the remarks from the appraiser. Again, the mutually established goals 
needs to be established by the deadline date of November 1st, on or before November 1st. So for the final evaluation, for the, um, for the professional support as well as the administrators, we have separate forms. For the mutual established goals, we use one form for both for the administrators as well as the professional support. But when we get to the final evaluation, that's where things change a little bit. So the administrator's form, as you can see, there it references um, our Cabell County Policy 1530 for administrators. And in this area, we have the um, administrator areas of instructional leadership, we have purpose and direction, educational value, our cognitive skills, leadership, quality enhancement, organization, communications, and technology standards. All of these will be reviewed with you before the, when you're having your conversation, when you're establishing your goals with your supervisor. These are the areas that you're going to be working through and that you can write your goals, your mutually established goals from. In each of these areas there are uh, ratings that in which at the end by the June 30th deadline when we do our final evaluations we're rated and those ratings include exemplary, exceed standards, meet standards, and then unsatisfactory. And it's important to note with the improvement plan that I discussed, if any of us fall to the unsatisfactory area of a rating, then that's when the improvement plan would be taken place. So with professional support personnel, again, we have a form for our narrative appraisal, and this will be used just like the administrator when at the end of the year, on or before June 30th, that your supervisor will be with you and it includes the areas of planning and preparation, implementation, administration and management, assessment evaluations, interventions, collaboration, professional development, professional responsibilities, and technology standards. All of these for the professional support personnel are detailed more in policy 5310 and section 126 noting 142, 20, and 21. You can get further information there to explain those. As stated before, once with the professional support personnel and the administrator personnel, once you have received this evaluation form and you've signed it, it doesn't mean you're agreeing to it, even though I would think we would agree if it's a really good uh, evaluation, but if, if, it's, if there are things on here that are concerning, you are signing it to say that you've received it and then you add the addendum five days after you receive that up to five uh, working days. In order to obtain a copy of these forms that you're going to be completing, they are on our Cabell County Schools website and you can go to the employee tab under the employee resources and school forms it says evaluation forms and I will also have a copy of a PowerPoint for you to refer to in case you should have any questions. As always, my door is open. If you have additional questions from any of this, please feel free to contact me there at the office. Thank you.